Okay. Uh, th this is, uh, you know, uh, our suggestion on what a crisis communication plan or manual or playbook, you know, uh, must contain. Uh, we 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 don't expect that this this plan, this manual, this playbook, uh, is completely done by the by the time that uh, we uh, no, we are expect that we are scheduled to make our presentations. Uh, in fact, uh, in my team at the at public affairs, we are working to put together a you know, a, a manual that will apply in certain situations and that, uh, you know, where there will be input coming from the Bayou CUs. But we certainly will need your inputs so that we can come out with a good playbook, with a good plan. And the structure, uh, our, our recommended stru structure is just the itong basic items lang na ito. The first chapter could be about introduction to what the plan is, what the plan does. And the second is activation. Now, the third one are implementation procedures. And then the fourth chapter will be appendices. And the last, uh, and the last chapter, or uh, well, a last section on other resources. Next slide, please. Okay, chapter one, the introduction, and also a, a statement that says that the communication plan, the crisis communication plan, provides a framework of authorities, roles, decision-making guidance, and organizational structures not to enable the university to quickly disseminate accurate information to stakeholders. That's basically, uh, you know, the foreword, you know, uh, the introduction, uh, the foreword uh, in the introduction to the, uh, in the introduction chapter. Next slide, please. Yeah. In the introduction also uh, could be a discussion you know, of what crises are. You know? uh, and we've had uh, a discussion on this one and certain examples have been, uh, uh, have, have been, uh, uh, well, you know, in your experiences, you can come out with some examples. For example, uh, I have a few here. No, uh, emergencies can be minor or major. No, what are minor? Uh, what are minor emergencies? I had a definition somewhere. No, minor emergencies are the ones that uh, uh, I think Junelle pointed out a little while ago. No, a minor. Uh, well, an emergency's definition is we could use the one that was, uh, you know, that uh, Doc Ted uh, told us about last week. An emergency is a sudden and unusual and usually unforeseen event. It's a surprise event that calls for immediate measures to minimize its adverse consequences. Emergencies be, may be minor and major. A minor incident. Uh, is uh, is an is an event potential or actual that would not seriously affect the overall functional capacity of the university. For example, uh, this could include uh, issues in the media, utility failures, uh, and uh, some attempts at, at uh, no, so, uh, you know um, social psychological issues. No? Uh, major crisis, major emergencies no, uh, are defined as any incident, potential or actual that affects, that affects an entire building or buildings. They disrupt the overall operations of the university and, we're, and uh, these are situations for which external services may be required along with the major efforts from the university's own support services. And then a disaster. A disaster is an occurrence that seriously impairs and or stops the operations of the university, such that the normal conditions of existence are disrupted and creates a level of suffering that exceeds the capacity of the, the capacity to adjust you know, by the affected community. So these are definitions that can be put in uh, in that section of the introduction. A second uh, section of the introduction could be about the purpose, you know, why uh, there is a, a crisis communication manual. Why? Uh, earlier we pointed out that the, that the objectives of having a plan is to provide accurate in timely information, to alert, to inform, and reassure and then to provide a resource. 
But on top of this one, the plan also allows, no, and that is why it is written, it will identify what are the crises or issues. That was the one above. It is, a, it is a, an explanation, a definition of the types and examples of crises. Uh, then there'll be a specification of who are the lead responsible persons. No? Uh, th that is why we need a plan. We have to tell people who are, uh, who are the lead responsible persons. And then we have to define who the per parties that are concerned. And then uh, you know, a plan is needed because uh, we need to give out timely reaction or a decision not to respond. And then we need to give out guidelines on con making messages consistent. The plan is also an important resource, as we said. No? Why? When, when Ritzy was talking about a playbook a little while ago, uh, we already have playbooks within the university. Uh, just for these items alone, no, we already have established links in our UP system uh, website. No, there are links no, to the acceptable use policy. Uh, if there are issues there, there's a link on our uh, on the opening page of our uh, UP system uh, website, and one can click on that one, and you can see already there the playbook that Ritzy was talking about. The same thing when it comes to issues, no, or concerns. Uh, 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 about uh, privacy, about data privacy, it's there. There's even a uh, a template, no, about uh, for you know, for non -dis disclosure undertaking, and then we could establish links, no, to the UPRI, uh, to the DRRM, you no, know, for the playbooks on what to do during earthquake earthquakes and fires. And there is also already a link to the uh, other concerns like in sexual harassment policy. So it's not as if we are starting from scratch. There are already links. No, it's essentially, there are already playbooks no, for certain emergencies, for certain issues or crisis within the university. What we really need to do is to expand on these playbooks. No. Next slide, please. Okay. The second chapter of the, of the manual will be about activation. And uh, this, again, uh, may differ from campus to campus. Now, this chapter, this is very, when I talk about chapters, no, this is, uh, you know, this is like one page, a one pager. No. The activation section no, uh, specifies who can activate the plan and when the plan is activated. Now, it's also in this section where uh, the composition of the crisis management team is specified. No, uh, and then also an identification of who constitute the crisis communication team. Next slide, please. Yeah. Uh, in the next chapter, the next section are, is uh, the implementation procedures. Remember that this is a manual, you know, and uh, it's to be opened up and, uh, uh, and like a playbook, titignan lamang, no? So if this is the emergency, these are the, uh, you know, uh, these are what can be done to, to implement, to trigger the activation of the crisis communication. And this is that third chapter, and we title it Implementation Procedures. Next slide, please. Yeah. Under, uh, in this section of implementation uh, uh, procedures, now there's again a little statement on what are our university's general communication principles. Uh, these are uh, our suggested ones, no? number one, no, as a general communication principle for the university in times of crisis, only designated spokespersons, and this will be the president, the chancellor, and the public affairs or the head of the crisis communication team have the authority to disseminate information to media, to professors, to students and staff. Secondly, you know, 
uh, that who this designated spokesperson is will depend on the type of the emergency. No? Thirdly, in all cases, the head of the crisis communication team prepares the messages for dissemination. But this dissemination must first be approved you know, by the head of the crisis management team. Fourthly, in all cases, the message must meet the standards that, that have been enumerated above. Again, uh, these are the standards of timeliness, consistency, accessibility, credibility, competence, and empathy, and shareworthiness. Fifth, no, generally, generally, internal communication precedes external communication. No. One of the first communication decisions during crisis is what to communicate and to whom. The general rule no, is that internal stakeholders, the BOR, the university officials, the faculty, the employees, the students should be first to know before the external stakeholders. Again, this may change. No, and, and is all information are all uh, audiences? Uh, should all audiences uh, be among the first to receive the communication? You know that will vary uh, from uh, you know, on depending on the type of the emergency. But the general rule really is: sa loob muna bago sa labas. No? And, uh, uh, and uh, uh, again, as a general communication principle, in all cases, in all cases, the responsible person for disseminating information should comply with the messages and statements crafted by the crisis communication team. After all, what we said a little while ago was about the consistency of information. You know, so we don't want to confound you know, information that is spreading. We do not want to contribute to misinformation. What we want to do is to communicate with as accurate and as timely information as we have them. Next slide, please. Okay, this is a uh, an identification now of who the responsible uh, disseminators of information should be. You know, if the stakeholders, uh, depending on who the stakeholders are. Now, of course, uh, if the main stakeholder is uh, not the main, they are the uh, is the board of regents. The information must come from the president. Now, for the faculty, it uh, information should be coming from uh, the president, the chancellor, and or uh, the vice president or vice chancellor for academic affairs. For staff and employees, again, the, pre the president and chancellor and or uh, the vice president or vice chancellor for administration. For students, again, uh, you have the same, not the president or the chancellor and the, the vice chancellor or director for student affairs. For community residents, uh, the chancellor, the vice chancellor for community affairs and the head of security. For alumni, no, uh, then it's the president, the chancellor, or uh, the alumni regent, or the alumni director, or the vice president, the vice chancellor, or director for public affairs and information. If it is for president, for parents, not the vice president or the vice chancellor for public affairs and information. For donors, the vice president, vice chancellor, or director for public affairs and information. And for the media, it should always always come from the vice president or the vice chancellor or the director for public affairs and information. Uh, the more, if there are other stakeholders, then there will be an identification of who these responsible individuals could be. Now, in all cases, again, the responsible person, I reiterate, the responsible person should comply with the messages and statements crafted by the crisis communication team. Next slide, please. Who constitutes this crisis communication team, okay? Who are they? Who are these? These will be part of your uh, assignment, you know, as uh, for this workshop. No, 
the who's the crisis communication team? Well, the personnel principally responsible for crisis communication is already in place in most campuses. No? Uh, that is the public affairs or information office. Uh, for the system, it is led, it is under the office of the, it's under my office, uh, public affairs, uh, but campuses also have a vice chancellor or directors for information, you know, and public uh, relations, public affairs, who then, and this is the team, now, this team communicates to the president, the executive vice president, the chancellor, and importantly, the VP or director for legal affairs. Okay, uh, some, uh, some more guidelines. The head of the crisis communication team is the PIO. The PIO is the principal information officer whose functions are number one, to coordinate the emergency public information and warnings. Secondly, to craft and approve and distribute messages for internal and external audiences. Man third, manage media and public inquiries. Establish restrictions for media access. Yung, sinasa, you know, uh, yung sinabi ni Dr. Balanya on kanina, hindi pwede pumasok ang media, lalo na kapag hospitalian. No? Uh, uh, it is also the job of the PIO to inform media, to conduct briefings, and if necessary, to arrange for tours and other interviews you know, uh, so that the media questions may be answered. The PIO also obtains news and social informa media information that may be useful for incident management and emergency coordination. Uh, social listening is so important at this time. Uh, at the university now, we have, uh, you know, uh, we... Uh, we have contracted a company that is doing the social listening for us. On a weekly basis, we get to see what, how the University of the Philippines is, including all the campuses uh, and uh, uh, whether uh, these are concerns of uh, students, faculty, employees, uh, even uh, even alumni, basta merong hashtag University of the Philippines, you get to see a picture of uh, how it is in the how it is in the social media. The job of the PIO is also to maintain current information summaries. No, why is that important? Because that will be for the briefings of the media later on. Next slide, please. Okay. The crisis response plan. Uh, this one is uh, more or less the playbook uh, that uh, uh, that Ritzy was talking about. And this crisis response, this crisis communication response plan, will again vary depending on the crisis that is uh, that is there. Now, uh, uh, you know. Uh, in a student handbook or even a faculty manual, uh, there must be a section on reporting, you know, crisis. No, because when a student, when any faculty, staff, employee, or student becomes aware of an issue, there must be a venue for them to report it. You know, because our knowledge of when an incident may or an issue may become an emergency or a disaster comes you know from our constituents so there must be a resource for reporting you know uh, and this could be in the student handbook or even in the faculty manual and uh, in our all our uh, informal briefings uh, with our employees no. So uh, when uh, they, uh, you know, people must know how they can report it, to whom they can report it, and uh, to whom they, can they report it? Well, to any of the following: the dean, the director of, the head of security, the chancellor, or the president. 
done. Uh, for the, these are for cases of internal sources of crises, whether these are minor or major. And then when there are existing playbooks, existing emergency policies, procedures, and plans, what, what's just necessary is to follow the procedure stated, which is why it's always important to follow a link to publicize that under these inst uh, instances, there are already established procedures. Kung tutuusin, it is just click on the link and follow the procedures as stated. Um, depending on the emergency, the crisis management team may be convened. No, if there are, you know, if the, you know, if the crisis is something that is uh, totally unprepared. Uh, the university was unprepared for. Okay, in cases, what is the response in cases of external sources of crises, major or minor? Well, it is uh, all queries you know, coming from external sources, you know, from third parties or the media should be handled, should be centralized with the public affairs and information offices. In the past, uh, I have uh, coordinated with the information officers of the different campuses you know, so that, uh, you know, again, we have this consistency of messaging that comes out. What is the response in case of disasters? Well, we are looking at the playbook of the UPRI. And I think that in next week's uh, session of the incident command, uh, uh, we will have more of this in responses in case of disasters. Uh, just a, a little note about getting the media on board. The usual misconception no, is that to avoid the media. Why? The media will just make the issue bigger now, you know, or uh, the media is out to get us, or the media will speculate, or the media will invent, or the media distort the facts because they don't understand. You know, the media are really our friends. No, uh, and for us to have a good control of uh, of a situation, including the image of the university, we need to know uh, that the media can be on our side, can be our ally. The good thing is, much of the media love the university because uh, you know many in the media are our graduates. No, so uh, it's actually not that difficult you know uh, to get the media on our side particularly in crisis situations and tama no sina dr malanya on at saka si ano uh, and i think we see a little while ago that when we engage with media we have to be you know as transparent as possible uh, in the past uh, we have uh, in uh, when i was dean of the college of mass communication and also uh, because i had this uh, this project on uh, on media relations. What we would do would uh, is to orient the media, you not know, to uh, to the university as well as train our media res our you know our resource persons in the university, our scientists, you no, know, on how to become more media friendly. Uh, to tell you the truth, Liba, uh, the media are as apprehensive of the experts as the experts are wary of the media. So, you know, if we are going to be friends with the media, there has to be a good relationship between us, between the university and the media. Next slide, please. Okay. An important section of this chapter on implementation is, an in the, is this section, communication tools. Now, which is a listing no, an inventory of all the available communication and media channels that uh, you know that uh, the university has. No, and what's important here is there is a matrix. If this is the website, who's in control? Who has access to the website? So why is that important? Because if you have information, do on the direct yung yung proper information. So it's an inventory of the communication media and channels along with who 
are the responsible people so that information can be shared with them. Next slide, please. Okay, uh, this is important. No, the section on appendices, no, uh, which uh, this is an appendix because uh, these are information that could change. No, uh, why the contact information is changeable, so baka mag -iba -iba yan, depending on uh, who are in the crisis management and who are in the crisis communication team. What's important here are not just their names and contact numbers, but are specific to contact numbers, not cell phone numbers, email addresses. Yeah. And, and this one's, you know, because of data privacy, uh, we may be, uh, you know, ma mahirap i, ano eh, uh, no, mahirap i share, uh, uh, you know, uh, on the website. So that's why uh, the sharing of this one has to be also controlled. No, uh, itong section na ito, itong appendices. No? Uh, part of the appendices should also be the list of and links to available information sources, resources. No? Uh, for example, what to do before, during, and after natural disasters. We have a lot of these uh, infographics already, really a lot of that. No? Uh, some of them need updating, and this could be integrated into the appendices. No, the uh, the in reporting of utility failures, the hotlines, no, uh, which could, which uh, you know, easy to memorize hotline numbers should be there too, as well as in the main body of uh, uh, of the manual, and then here also in the appendices are templates, no, uh, uh, templates, no, you own guidelines for writing letters, no, making media releases, no about certain events, no? certain crises, certain emergencies, certain issues. For example, how do you, when, uh, when a student dies, no? uh, in, you know, if, uh, uh, if uh, it is a success, you know, some of them ha really have suicidal ideations. What if something happens to them, especially at times of stress, as we are under right now, how do you write it? No? In, remember that um, in such situations, we want to come out uh, with empathy, with concern, you know. And so, mahirap yun kung minsan eh, di ba? So, in this section of the appendices, there could be already be templates for these ones, no? Uh, meron ako dito, including nga yung ano eh, information on some, you know, bakit pinag-let go ang um, ano, uh, certain personnel, no? How do you put that out? No, uh, what about in cases of peace and order and security in the university? How do we come out no, uh, with media releases for that one? So in this section on the appendices could be templates and guidelines no, for, for how to write these out. Last slide, please. Okay. And then there could be additional resources, no? Uh, because we are also producing an OER, no? For uh, for crisis management, no? And foresight planning, you know, we could have more resources, uh, as you know, in that manual. We can include here the risk assessment process that uh, that uh, Doc Ted talked to us about last week. And then also uh, the foresight planning and capability development that Doc Charlie also introduced us to last week. So these could be additional resources that that communication crisis communication manual can contain. And that is the end of uh, my overview. Thank you very much.